Hi, my name is Alex Filipenko, and I'd like to give you a brief introduction to Pi. Now, Pi, whose symbol is given here, is the number that you get when you take the circumference of a circle, that is, all the way around, and divide it by its diameter, that is, the distance all the way across. So pi is the circumference divided by the diameter. And this number, pi, is the same for all circles. No matter which circle you take, circumference divided by di diameter is equal to pi. Pi comes from the Greek word perimetros, which means perimeter, or in the case of a circle, the circumference of a circle. And the first letter of perimetros is pi, the Greek letter pi. Now, an approximation to pi is 3.14159. But pi is actually not exactly that number. It turns out to be an irrational number. That means that it cannot be expressed as the ratio of two integers, m and n. You can't express pi exactly in that manner. You can approximate it. For example, 22 sevenths is about 3.14, and that's roughly pi, but it's not exactly pi. And 355 over 113 is even closer to the true value of pi, but again, it's not exactly pi. Pi doesn't end. So unlike, for example, 1 half, whose decimal representation is given by 0.5, it ends. And unlike 1 eighth, whose representation is 0.125, it too ends. Pi doesn't end. Its decimal representation doesn't end. It's infinite. And it doesn't repeat. So for example, 1 third is given by 0.33333, a never ending series of threes. It repeats. But pi doesn't repeat. The first 10 digits of pi are 3.14159 And that's a pretty good representation of pi. But pi keeps on going. It's not the exact value of pi, because pi goes on forever. And although mathematicians have tried to find a pattern in the digits of pi, they have so far found no clear pattern. It also never repeats. Okay, It just looks like a random set of numbers, but there's some system to it. When one can calculate these numbers, but there's no pattern, it doesn't end, and it doesn't repeat. So in fact, the exact value of pi can never be known. Now, most people have heard of pi because of the case of a circle. It turns out that pretty much any irrational number has these properties that it doesn't end and doesn't repeat. It's just that pi is the most well-known irrational number because people are familiar with the circle and the fact that its circumference is equal to pi times the diameter or 2 pi times the radius. So people are familiar with circles. Pi is also very, very useful in math and science and engineering. It appears in all kinds of formulas. For example, the area, the area of a circle, is pi times the square of its radius, pi times r times r. And the volume of a sphere, the stuff inside a sphere, is 4 thirds pi times the cube of the radius, 4 thirds pi r cubed. And there are lots and lots of formulas. So pi just appears all over the place. People know about it. And so it's one of the favorite irrational numbers. You can easily estimate the circumference of a circle, pi times the diameter, by simply saying that pi is roughly 3. So for example, if I take this nickel, and it turns out the diameter of the nickel it's just a tad over two centimeters, just a little bit over two centimeters. Well, the circumference, the distance around, is roughly three times two, or six centimeters, actually a tad over six centimeters, and that's the circumference of the nickel. So the circumference of a bicycle wheel, or a plate, or anything circular, can be estimated by multiplying its diameter by three, which is a rough approximation of pi. Here's some approximations of pi. Pi goes on forever, but it turns out that for most practical purposes, you don't need the value of pi to very many digits. Most of the time, six digits will suffice in any 
reasonable calculation. Sometimes even three digits, 3.14 suffices. Sometimes even just one digit, three suffices. As for example, calculating the approximate circumference of a circle. So you don't really need all those digits of pi. It's convenient that a few digits often suffices for everyday purposes. Now, with 10 digits, if you give pi to 10 digits, it turns out that you can specify the circumference of the Earth to a precision of one centimeter, okay? So you don't really need millions of digits of pi in order to be able to express quantities that are measurable on Earth with good precision. Indeed, if you were to list pi to 39 digits, and then try to specify the circumference of the biggest possible circle in the observable universe, you would have a precision good to about the diameter of an atom. Okay, now an atom is yay, yay big, and I exaggerate greatly, okay? An, an atom is really, really small. But using pi to 39 digits, any circle in the observable universe will be given to a precision of, a, of an atom or better, as long as you've measured the diameter of that circle to a comparable precision. All right, well, there's a number of unanswered questions, actually many unanswered questions about pi and about many irrational numbers. But in this case, let's look at some of them. The digits 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9, do they or do they not occur infinitely many times within pi? Now, perhaps the number 3 doesn't occur infinitely many times. We don't know. How about the number 8? Again, we don't know whether the individual digits occur an infinite number of times within this infinite sequence of numbers. That's kind of interesting. You might have thought that, of course, they must occur an infinite number of times, but it turns out that's not entirely clear. It may be true, but it's not clear. Does dig each digit occur equally often? Okay, do ones and twos and fives occur with the same relative frequency equally often? We don't really know that. Is there a place where there's a thousand consecutive values of zero? That is, a thousand consecutive zeros in this long string of numbers that is pi. We actually don't know that. All right, we've never taken pi out to sufficiently many digits to see if there's a string of a thousand digits. So far, we haven't found such a string, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And do the, for example, first million digits of pi occur anywhere else in the sequence of digits that is pi? We don't know that, okay? In fact, all that we really know is that within the first 200 million digits, for example, 3141592 only the first eight digits, is the longest sequence among the first 200 million. That gives you some idea of how short these sequences have been found to be repeating within pi. In other words, very long sequences have not yet been found. That doesn't mean they don't exist, and there are some longer ones beyond the first 200 million digits of pi, but within the first 200 million digits of pi, that's the longest one, only eight digits that exist. So does a sequence occur where there's the first million digits of pi? Maybe somewhere in pi it exists, but we don't really know. Well, if you go to the website pizone.com, you can find all sorts of cool things about pi. And in particular, there's some interactive elements and links that allow you to choose any number you want, up to say like 10 digits, and see where it first occurs in the sequence of digits that is pi. So for example, you could choose your birth date, or you, know, you could choose your favorite lottery numbers, or maybe your phone number, a 10-digit phone number, and find out where it first occurs within the first 200 million digits of pi. It might not occur. The shorter the string of numbers that you give, the greater is the chance that that string of numbers will occur somewhere within the first 200 million digits of pi. Okay? When you're up to 10 digits, it may well not occur. In fact, most 10-digit sequences don't occur within the first 200 million digits of pi, but obviously most two-digit se sequences, like 42, do occur. All of them occur, in fact. Anyway, at this um, website, you can find all sorts of cute things to do with pi, and, you know, 
pi is really an amazing number. So I encourage you to dive in and learn more about pi at this website, in books, and other websites. Have fun. <laughs>